Hello, Book Tube. Well, I'm I'm very much in need of cheering up, so uh, I put the camera on its shelf because uh, I've got some mail, and rifling through the mail with you uh, always cheers me up. Uh, so we'll give it a try. <laughs> it's not a big mail haul, so even if it fails, uh, you'll still have some books to look at. Uh, so we'll start with this one. Uh, well. Not a bad start. It's romance novels. So we have When I Need You by Lorelai James, uh, which looks contemporary. She's holding a football and he has a cut off sleeves. Uh, heir, heir to Lund Industries and ladies man Jensen the Rocket Lund has three conditions when it comes to dating. No single mothers, no cheerleaders, and no medical personnel. So it makes no sense that he's widely attracted to Rowan Michaels, who breaks all three. Rowan didn't pass the rigorous requirements to become an athletic trainer and Vikings cheerleader in the hopes of landing a pro athlete. Been there, done that, she has a young son as proof that football players and fidelity don't go hand in hand. But when she learns that her new neighbor is Jensen Lund, who takes to being neighborly, uh, being neighborly to a whole new level, she's grateful for the team's strict no fraternization policy. Okay, but the the next one is by jo Joanna Byrne, and it's Beauty Like the Night, which looks like a period piece, looks historical. Um, Severine de Cabrillac, orphan of the French Revolution and sometime British intelligent agent, has required has tried to leave spying behind. Now she devotes herself to investigating crimes in London and finding justice for the wrongly accused. Raoul de Verney, an enigmatic half-Spaniard with enough secrets to earn every spy's respect, is at her door demanding help. She's the only one who can find the killer of his long-estranged wife and rescue her missing 12-year-old daughter. Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting in its own right, because that's not... That, that's got a, a, a lot of balls in the air that your typical historical romance doesn't have that's uh that's interesting and it, and i i don't immediately recognize the name joanna Bourne, but she has a lot of novels so uh, i might have read her before and i'm just not remembering it uh but these are these are two from berkeley uh to start us off so that's good uh and then we've got this one here okay this comes out in september it's not anything I requested. Looks like a thriller. Uh, Madness Treads Lightly by Polina Dashkova. Translated by Marion Schwartz from, I assume, the Russian. Uh, let's see. Yes. Translated from the Russian by Marion Schwartz. Uh, nothing is colder than Siberia except a grave. Only three people can connect present-day murderer to a serial killer who 14 years ago terrorized a small Siberian town and one of them is already dead. As a working mother, Lena Politskaya has her hands full. She's busy caring for her two-year-old daughter, editing a successful magazine, and supporting her husband, a high-ranking colonel in counterintelligence. She doesn't have time to play amateur detective, but when a close friend's suspicious death is labeled a suicide, she's determined to prove he wouldn't have taken his own life. As she digs into the investigation, all clues point to murder and its connection to a string of grisly cold case homicides that stretches back to the Soviet era. That sounds really good. That that sounds really, really good. It's by Amazon. It's published by Amazon. I'm just encountering this problem more and more often uh, where, where Amazon is just by random chance or by good editorial decisions is starting to put out books that I feel wrong just summarily ignoring. Uh, even though uh, Amazon hates books and they hate the publishing industry and they want to be the publishing industry. Uh, and also from all that I've read, they hate their own self-published authors. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I will certainly read it. I, I, uh, I haven't yet brought myself to review an Amazon book. But may, one of these days, that is bound to change. Uh, because no matter what... I think about Amazon's predatory uh, retail practices. As a reviewer, my, the first thing I want to do is praise good books from the rafters. 
get get people reading books that I've found that I think they might enjoy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sooner or later, those three things are going to come into an unbelievable conflict, and I know which will win. So, uh, but let's let's. I don't know that this will be that. It, it sounds really good though. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to this next one. This will almost certainly be the only video you get from me today. Sorry about that. Um, it's, another it's another thriller. Uh, it's by Shari Lapina, and it's Stranger in the House. A Stranger in the House. Uh, comes out uh, in mid-August, a month from now. And what have we got? What have we got here? Uh... And she did The Couple Next Door last year. Don't even remember that. Certainly didn't read it. I don't think. No, I don't think I did. Uh, a Stranger in the House is a perfect for lovers of fast-paced, beach-ready psychological thrillers. Like its predecessor, this is a book with a woman about a woman with a secret. Multiple secrets, in fact. And a husband who doesn't know what to believe when his wife is found on the wrong side of town in a car crash she doesn't remember or is trying hard to forget. When Tom Krupp comes home to find an empty house, he knows something is very wrong. Karen has no memory of the night that led to her car accident, but as the police discover more, her behavior looks increasingly suspicious. As the secrets begin to surface from Karen's past, both Tom and her best friend begin to have their doubts about her story. Can they really trust Karen? Of course, they have secrets of their own. When the truth is revealed, no one comes out clean. Uh, so the... the the title is A Stranger in the House. I'm very, just on a personal level, very, very glad that the title was not The Girl Behind the Wheel. Uh, so that I can read it and maybe maybe even like it. You never know. Uh, and then the, the last thing, as usual, I saved a box for laugh. It's not a big box, though, so I don't, I don't really know what it... Uh, it might be a mass market paperback. Uh, it's too small a box to be a hardcover, but it's got some weight to it. So, uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, this is actually my monthly shipment of Angry Robot science fiction novels. Uh, you might remember from an earlier uh, an earlier video that I I got uh, a book by Patrick Tomlinson from the Dead Earth series. This is book three, uh, Children of the Divide. I remember in, in an earlier video I got books one and two. So that's great. I now have the whole... I thought in that video that number two was the latest one. Uh, but it turns out, no, there is a brand new one. And I now have the whole thing. I have, I have all the novels up to now. So I can start with the first one and just make my way forward. Great. Fantastic. Uh, Eighteen years after the last survivors of the human race arrived on the colony planet of Gaia, a new generation comes of age. Sounds like you need to read the first two first. Now threats from both win, within and without... Uh, and outside their trident threaten everything they've built. The discovery of an alien installation inside Gaia's moon, terrorist attacks, and the kidnap of a man's daughter stretch the community to the breaking point, but only two men stand a chance of solving all three mysteries before the makeshift planetary government shuts everything down. Okay, so uh, this is still, it's, it sounds like still this is a gumshoe detective a thriller type thing grafted onto uh, science fiction. So uh, let's see what the, let's see what the next one is. This is Peter Tyrius, uh, the United States of Japan. Oh, in the mass market. Okay, I remember this from when it came out originally. Uh, right? This is the United States of Japan. This it's got some some play. It got some reviews. It came out in 2016. So this is the mass market copy of that. Uh, decades ago, Japan won the Second World War. Americans worship their infallible emperor, and nobody believes that Japan's conduct in the war was anything but exemplary. Nobody, that is, except the George Washingtons, a shadowy group of rebels fighting for freedom. Their latest subversive tactic is to distribute an illegal video game that asks players to imagine the world would be like if the United States had won the war instead. So I didn't read the United States of Japan, uh, and now I'm curious to. And now I have it. Good. Great. Uh, and the next one is The Rise of Io by Wesley Chu. Uh, the war is over. Her fight just has just begun. It's 
kind of a nice cover. Our female protagonist facing ghostly opponents. I like that. Uh, and uh, Wesley Chu is the author of the Time Salvager novels, uh, which I, I read and reviewed the first one. It was not particularly kind. Uh, but let's see what we have here. Earth is in the aftermath of a civil war that began between two alien factions. Ella Patel, third thief, con artist, and smuggler, is in the wrong place at the wrong time when, on the border of a demilitarized zone, she happens upon a man and woman being chased by a heavily armed gang. The man freezes, leaving the woman to fight off five attackers before succumbing. As she dies, uh, to both Ella and the man's surprise, the sparkling light that rises from the woman enters Ella instead of the man. She soon realizes she's being inhabited by Io, a low-ranking quasing who, has, who was involved in some of the worst decisions in human history. Now the useless alien is in her head and giving, is giving every impression of trying to get her killed. If you can't trust the voices in your head, who can you trust? This also is not new. I remember that description. Uh, yeah, this also is from 2016. All right, so I have a couple of, uh, of 2016 or 2017 new and mass market paperbacks. And then the last one is by Jeff Noon. It's called A Man of Shadows. Of course, the first thing I want to do now is see if this is also old. Uh, no, this is 2017. Okay. Uh, this is a city unlike any other, one half held in perpetual daylight, the other in permanent darkness. Below the neon skies of day zone, where the lights never go out, the night has been banished. Lowly private eye John Nyquist takes an, on a teenage runaway case. Another gumshoe thing. Maybe that's Angry Robot's thing. His quest takes him from Day Zone into the blackest of the city's other side, Nocturna. As a vicious, seemingly invisible ser oh, a vicious, it's a typo, that's all. As a vicious, seemingly invisible serial killer, the press have nicknamed Quicksilver, haunts the streets, Nyquist starts to suspect that uh, the runaway girl holds within her the key to the city's fate. In the end, there's only one place left to search, the shadow-choked zone known as Dusk. Hmm. I guess a man of shadows. Kind of a nice cover. Uh, who, who is responsible for this, this Escher-esque cover design? Will Staley. Interesting. All right, so, uh, so we got some mass markets today. That's good. So we got a, a man of shadows. Uh, and then... A, Soviet era murder mystery, uh, madness treads lightly. Uh, another thriller, uh, a stranger in the house, uh, very much along the lines of uh, the girl on the train, in that the the female protagonist is a mess, a complete mess. Uh, uh, then the United States of Japan in mass market, the rise of Io in mass market. Children of the Divide, the third book of Patrick Tomlinson's Dead Earth series. Uh, Beauty Like the Night uh, by Joanna Byrne and When I Need You by Lorelai James. So it's a nice a nice stack of mass market paperbacks. Uh, so that's good. I, I, will, uh, I will sign off for now and give these a thorough looking over. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.